Good morning, my dear and respected panelists. I am Maria Teresa Teope, a Master of Education, major in English student from Pampanga State Agricultural University. Allow me to present to you my study entitled, Please Learn the Competencies in Grade 9 English, a Basis for Text-Based Chatbot. As an introduction, the World Health Organization announced the novel SARS coronavirus infection a pandemic imposing a lockdown on several countries, including the Philippines, based from the President Duterte's Proclamation No. 922. According to Simbulan, this proclamation puts the country under enhanced community quarantine, forcing the general public to stay at home and closure of non-essential establishments, schools, and universities included. Regardless, Secretary Leonor Magtoles Briones reiterated that education must continue by focusing on the alternatives. This is similar to UNESCO's standpoint, citing that if education stops, human capital will be lost. In line with this, the Department of Education developed Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan focusing on different learning modalities such as distance learning as stipulated in the DepEd Order No. 18, Series of 2020. Distance learning is a learning modality wherein the teacher is geographically remote from the learner as referred to by Quinones. According to Bernardo, there are several types of distance learning, but what was used in the Philippine public setup was the modular learning since 8.8 .8 million parents prefer this type of learning modality. This type of learning uses a self-learning module based on the most essential learning competencies that promote self-learning. Since the pandemic changed the face of education forever, the need to use digital platform to support and supplement learning has become an integral component of the school education, according to Lee and Lelani. It has become a platform to reinforce learning. Moreover, studies showed that interactive learning using computer-mediated materials enhanced learning and results showed a positive impact on students. In addition, technology has been integrated in teaching and learning English as a secondary language. Furthermore, English is the language of globalization and the integration of technology improved the quality of learning. Thus, the shift from traditional to the use of technology is evident in ESL learning. Moreover, mastering English as a secondary and foreign language has become essential since English bridges the gap globally and resolves unavoidable conflict. This leads the Philippines to make English a compulsory educational subject. Furthermore, English must be used as a secondary language beginning first grade as stipulated in the Department Memorandum Order No. 189, Series of 2003. Despite the efforts, the ranking of the Philippines in the English Proficiency Index has become alarmingly low based on the most recent results according to Valderrama. The Philippines ranked 20th in the 2019 English Proficiency Index from being number 14 and went down to number 27 in just a matter of a year. Consequently, the Department of Education developed a competency-based learning material that is tailored fit, matching the students' needs through mastery-based progressions and assessments aligned to measurable and transferable learning outcomes and objectives. These learning outcomes are in the Department of Education's Curriculum Guide, wherein communicative competence is one of the learning outcomes as well as multiliteracies. In addition, communicative competence, according to Himes, is the ability to use the language correctly and appropriately. Moreover, communicative competence is, to, is classified into four, according to the Curriculum Guide. Number one, grammatical linguistic competence. Number two, Social linguistic competence, number three, discourse competence, and number four, strategic competence. Despite repetition, there are still learning competencies that the learners find difficult. As a result, DepEd ensures learning through curriculum adjustment, alignment of materials, and training for teachers and school heads, according to Somalinov. 
One of these uh, trainings was held on March 18, 2021, encouraging the teachers to use chatbot, particularly many chats, in delivering online, offline learning, as well as providing interactive conversation 24-7 with the learners. What is a chatbot? Chatbot is a computer-based experiment with language that started in the 1950s. Its initial attempt was to mimic human conversation, but as technology improves, chatbots have become a reliable language partner. Chatbots are perfect language partners since chatbots allow the learners to learn at their own pace and it compensates the insufficient individual support with less financial investments. Moreover, studies showed improvement in the learner's English proficiency using chatbot according to al -Qayyad. Thus, the researcher conducted this study to bridge the gap since being despite a perfect language partner, interaction failed because artificial intelligence, according to Weinberg, cannot understand the learners and a human needed to step in. Furthermore, Chatbots are just conversation practice machines according to Konyam and are not robust language partners. This research was also conducted because of the recommendation of B2 and Langat that chatbots must be used in other subjects in the school curricula. Furthermore, there are no studies conducted in the local of the researcher, particularly in the school's division of Pampanga, exploring the chatbot's effectiveness. For the theoretical framework, this study will utilize cognitive learning theory, specifically information processing theory. Its proponent, Jean Piaget, posits that learning relates information to existing knowledge and learners begin to accumulate some basic knowledge and advance into deeper information with time, as cited by Fontana, Johansen, Ertmer, Anubi, and Michaela. Also, this study will be anchored on the self-regulated learning theory, um, wherein its proponent, Barry J. Zimmerman, refers to this theory as the planning to adopt the self-generated thoughts, feelings, and actions that influence learning outcomes. In addition, communicative competence by Del Himes will also be utilized. Communicative competence is a term coined by Del Himes in 1966. According to Bagarik, it is the mastery of rules and communicative functions depending on the social context and a synthesis of underlying knowledge system and the skills needed for communication. These theories were utilized since the text-based chatbot solely depend on the learner's active participation, self-regulation, and self-direction in processing basic existing knowledge to advance information with time. This information were based from the DepEd's curriculum guide or in communicative competence is one of the desired outcomes. For the conceptual framework, the researcher developed a text-based chatbot system focusing on grade 9 learners' least learned competencies in English using the ADI model. According to Kuluta, the phases of this model represents a dynamic, flexible guideline for creating practical training and support tools. Also, this is a five-stage model, namely analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate, wherein Kurt stated that the sequence of the steps does not require a strictly linear progress. This is the paradigm of the study. This research is a quantitative quasi-experiment since this study used a structured research instrument provided by the institution and it attempted to establish the relationship of the use of chatbot in improving the least learned competencies. Also, the researcher used a one-group pre-test, post-test since Creswell pointed that a pre-test would measure the characteristics and attributes of the participants in, a, in an experiment before receiving the treatment. In contrast, the post-test will gauge the difference after the intervention. The use of developmental design was also evident since Tracy um, cited that this establishes an, an empirical basis for creating instructional and non-instructional products 
tools, and new enhanced concepts through a systematic study of design, development, and evaluation process. The study participants were 30 bona fide grade 9 students belonging to Section L in one of the public schools in Magalang, Pampanga, enrolled the school year 2021-2022. The study participants were 30 bona fide grade 9 students belonging to Section L in one of the public schools in Magalang, Pampanga, enrolled the school year 2021-2022. The participants were considered based from the availability of the gadgets as well as with signed parental consents. For the instrument, the researcher utilized the provided tool by the College of Education of Pampanga State Agricultural University to evaluate the validity and acceptability of the proposed chatbot. There were revisions on the instruments as approved by the College of Education. Now, the text-based chatbot was evaluated in the following parameters. Number one, content. Two, design and format. Three, technical, in which these factors or parameters are answerable by yes or no. Also, the researcher used a teacher-made pre-test and post-test. The test consisted of 20 multiple-choice items. The researcher employed the pre-tests and post-tests following the guideline currently prescribed by the local of the study. The researcher determined the least learned English 9 competencies by gathering the data from the locale of the researcher. The text-based chatbot was evaluated based on its content, design and format, and technical parameters. There are two sets of uh, evaluators. The first set of evaluators who assessed the content of the text-based chatbot was an English master teacher, an English subject teacher, an English critic with more than five years in the profession and who possess a master's degree. Meanwhile, two IT experts validated the technical aspects of the text-based chatbot. These experts thought for not less than three years and possess a master's degree. For the procedure, analyze phase. The analyze phase was the most crucial since this is where the researcher identifies the learning gaps that needs intervention. The researcher gathered the least learned competencies using mean percentage score provided by the local of the researcher. The gathering of the data was done after securing permission from the school heads. The researcher also administered a teacher-made pre-test to determine the participant's test scores prior to the implementation of the text-based chatbot. The second phase was the design phase. The design phase is the stage of finding methods on how to approach the gaps based on the analysis. The researcher made the content of the text-based chatbot outlined in the Department of Education's self-learning module. The researcher, of course, seek consent in using and modifying these contents to fit the chatbot's interface. Um, the content and the design or the format of the contents of the chatbot were evaluated by the three English experts. The third phase is the development. It is producing the learning material using tools and applications and is putting the design into practice. The researcher used ManyChat based on the DepEd's recommendation since it contains windows with specific commands allowing the researcher to create an interaction and it is an excellent platform to build a chatbot according to Wooters. This is how the development of a text-based chatbot looked like. As presented, uh, a text-based chatbot uses Growth Tool, which is an interface that contains a primary and a flow builder. The text-based chatbot was straightforward since the researcher encoded the data followed by an action or a series of actions. The researcher created the chatbot rule base or retrieved base to match 
the text inputted with the appropriate predefined responses. This is similar to how Vanik Vasin created his chatbot. Two IT experts evaluated the technical parameters of the text-based chatbot. The fourth phase is the implementation phase. The implementation ensures that the learning material is functional by allowing the target audience to use it. After being approved, the researcher instructed the participants to use the text-based chatbot. Since according to Kennedy, there is no one-size-fits-all approach for screen time, so the researcher instructed the participants to use the chatbot for an hour or two following Child Development Institute's recommendation. The fifth and final phase is the evaluation phase. According to Kurt, the evaluation is the last stage of the ADI model, where the meticulous final testing of the learning material happens. The researcher administered a teacher-made post-test which will be compared to the pre-test scores of the participants. The basis to describe the test scores was the following ranges. The scores from 0 to 4 will be described as did not meet expectations, 5 to 8, fairly satisfactory, 9 to 12, satisfactory, 13 to 16, very satisfactory, and scores from 16 to 20 will be described as, as outstanding. As part of the evaluation phase, the researcher also used paired t-test to determine if there was a significant difference in the participants' performance after using them. The study targeted developing and validating a text-based chatbot system and determining its effectiveness, focusing on grade 9 students' least learned English competencies in one of the public schools in Magalang, Pampanga during the school year 2020-2021. The researcher sought answers to these questions. Number one, what are the least learned competencies? Number two, how may the text-based chatbot for English lessons in grade 9 be designed? Number three, how may the text-based chatbot for English lessons in grade 9 be evaluated in terms of A, content, B, design or format, and C, technical? Number four, how may the participants' pre-test and post-test scores be described? And lastly, is there a significant difference between the participants' test scores in their pre-test and post-test after the evaluation? For the results and discussion, Table 1.1 shows the least learned competencies based on the mean percentage scores during the school year 2020-2021 from the researcher's locale of the study. The following competencies that fall under grammar awareness domain were are as follows. 1. Use of adverbs in narration, and 2. Recognize the use of adverbs. On the other hand, the writing and composition competencies were the following. Identify the types and features of a synopsis, and number 2. Identify the types and features of a play synopsis. For the research problem number 2, how may the text-based chatbot for English lessons in grade 9 be designed? The text-based chatbot was developed following the ADI model as discussed in the research procedure. For the research problem number 3, how may the text-based chatbot for English lessons in grade 9 be evaluated in terms of content, design, or format, and technical? Um, table 3 presents the evaluation of the text-based chatbot based on its content. As presented, the evaluators agreed on all five aspects concerning the content of the text-based chatbot. To further discuss, the evaluation implied that the contents of the text-based chatbot are very relevant to the main goal and the text-based chatbot contributes to the achievement of the lesson objectives. Furthermore, the evaluation implied that the contents of the text-based chatbot use easy-to-understand language free from errors that suit the characteristics of the target participants. Thus, the text-based chatbot was significant and helpful to the teachers and the students. Table 3.2 shows the evaluation of the text-based chatbot based on its design and format. 
the evaluators all agreed that the design or format of the text-based chatbot presents clear textual information using appropriate font, font size and style. Moreover, the organization of the text-based chatbot's main and subtopics was evident, and the observation of the proper spacing between text, sentences, and paragraphs. The Table 3.3 .3 presents the evaluation of the text-based chatbot based on its technical or technological parameters. Moreover, the evaluators all agreed that the text-based chatbot was user-friendly since it only requires available applications and equipment and used a simple interface and essential navigational tools. Furthermore, the evaluation implied that integrating the text-based chatbot in the learning management system might be possible. For the research problem number four, how may the participants pre-test and post-test course be described? Table 4.1 shows the results of the pre-test and post-test course of the participants. As seen, most of the participants scored fairly satisfactory prior to implementing the text-based chatbot since the mean was 6.83. Moreover, as reflected from the table, the participants scored outstanding after using the text-based chatbot since the mean obtained was 16.90. For the fifth and final research problem, is there a significant difference between the participants' test scores and their pre-test and poster scores after the intervention? Table 5.1 presents the difference between the pre-test scores and post-test scores using third t-test. The results showed that there's a highly significant difference in the participants' test scores after the implementation of the text-based chatbot. This result was similar to Vanik Vatsin's findings, indicating that the post-test scores were significantly higher than the pre-test scores at the, the 0 0.5 level of significance. Furthermore, this finding showed an increased understanding of the research topics after using Chatbot as personalized learning support. In addition, Vasquez Cano, Manuel Andres, and Lopez Meneses concluded a significant difference in the pre-test and post-test scores regarding correct usage of punctuation marks after the Chatbot intervention. Also, the researchers pointed to a significant improvement in the use of punctuation marks and different grammatical structures after the intervention. Hence, considering these results, Chatbot can become a teaching tool promoting self-regulated learning. The following conclusions were in line with the findings presented. Number one, the least learned competencies are as follows. Using adverbs in narration, Recognizing verbals, identifying the types and features of prose, identifying the types and features of a play synopsis. Number two, the text-based chatbot design follows a step-by-step -step process. Number three, the text-based chatbot is valid in content, design or format, and technical parameters. Number four, the pre-test scores are fairly satisfactory while the post-test scores are outstanding. Number five, there is a highly significant difference in the pre-test and post-test scores of the participants after the intervention of the text-based chatbot. For the recommendation, the researchers suggest using chatbot as a supplementary learning material in different subjects across the curricula based on the obtained results. Furthermore, the researcher recommends this since other findings showed that almost 30% of higher education institution use chatbots to provide student assistance. Also, Vinik Vasin recommended using a chatbot technology to provide positive learning outcome. Second, the researcher recommends that future researchers should consider conducting further studies with significant number of control and experimental group to extend the results in broader terms. And lastly, the researcher recommends using a more flexible web-based online platform since this could support other lessons with longer texts. Thank you so much for watching. That ends my presentation. I am now ready for your questions.